Mr. Stevie's tall, tall, toy, tall, 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 tall toy tales. Quick fire! Yeah, uh, bag of what sits, please. First things first, why is this called a bag of what-sits? Okay, so this shelf in my collection is all about the sort of odds and sods, TV shows, movies of the era, sort of early 80s that I don't have big collections of. But I call it a bag of what-sits because a lot of them were TV shows like the A-Team, things like A-Team, Knight Rider, Dukes of Hazard, those types of things. And I used to watch those on a Saturday night at my grandma's house with my cousins, laying on a shag pile carpet, eating a bag of what-sits. What's a what-sits? This is a what-sits. There you are, bag of chips, basically. So I have very fond memories of being at my grandma's watching these types of shows. And here are our three inch, three and three quarter inch Galoob figures. We have, I gotta remember all the names now, Hannibal, we have Howling Mad Murder, we have Face Man who drove the white Corvette, and then of course we have B.A. Baracus here. And these were put together using O-rings. And if I pull it without hopefully breaking, you can probably see in it. An O-ring is essentially a rubber band, a rubber O looped band that holds the, the hip and the leg joints to the torso, allowing for a very free range of motion. The interesting thing about Galoob's three and three quarter inch A-team team, you can only buy them in one set, in like a big four pack. And they came as a four, and then you've got a load of weapons. You've got mortars and sort of rifles and things, and some very brittle, and I don't even want, no, very brittle backpacks and stuff like that. So you buy, bought them in a, in a four pack. You could also buy the bad guys in a, in, in a four pack. You could also get, of course, you could get the van, and I really want the van, but I've yet to find one that is in the quality that I like it. It usually has the, the GMC badge, is usually broken, and it's scratched and scuffed, and. But I'll get one, I'll get one. And you could also get, you get Face Man's Corvette, you could get things like a patrol boat, a helicopter, you could get a hero's camp set, which came with a load of sort of, um, like I think little dinghy boats and sandbags and stuff and tents that you could make up their own uh, camp. Gloob also released a six inch scale version of this line that included a variety of characters, vehicles, didn't do the van though, which is weird. And also this super duper rare command center, which uh, stands at three feet tall. I've never seen one in the flesh. I've never seen one on eBay either. They've been in trouble with the law since the day they were born. I loved the Dukes of Hazard. It was an amazing Saturday TV show. Sadly, it was one of the last lines that Mego produced back in about 1981. I think they went out of business in 83. Originally, Mego uh, launched the Dukes of Hazard line with their typical eight inch um, action figures, but they went down to the three and three quarter inch and it had a pretty good run actually. You know, there were there were a couple of series of the of the toys. We had you know, Bo Luke, Daisy, Boss Hog, Roscoe, Cooter, Cletus, Jesse, um, they made the General Lee, of course. They made Daisy's Jeep. Boss Hod had his Cadillac and his police car with, uh, with, with the sheriff's police car. Interestingly, if you look at these, um, Bo and Luke, now which is which, I always get this wrong. I think he's Luke, um, are O rings. You know, we just looked at the A team and they had the O rings. You know what that is like, and I don't want to break them, but you can see there. So they're O rings, so they're, he's super floppy. But the rest of them are the typical, the more typical sort of Kenner esque. Five points of articulation, you know, flat plane, arms, legs, and oh, what I love about this line is that Boss Hog gets his hat, so does, uh, so does Roscoe, is this Roscoe? Yes, yeah, Roscoe. He gets his little soft PVC hat, which I really like. Sadly, Jess, you know, he gets his molded. I want that loose. Uh, one interesting fact that I'm gonna tell you about right now is the actors that played Bo and Luke in season five were having a dispute about merchandise. So they left the series for like, a whole series, which I never realized. And their characters, Bo and Luke, were replaced by Koi and Vance. And supposedly there are figures out there with Koi and Vance um, head sculpts swapped out on the bodies. And I believe the three and three quarter inch figures actually have the names updated on the packaging. I think they did eight inch, but they just, they left them as Bo and Luke, but just did different head sculpts. Really, really messed up. Um, in the end, they came to agreement and then the actors for Bo and Luke came back in the sixth season or even like halfway through the fifth season. But anyway, there are some coin vents and I haven't seen them. I can't even find pictures of them online. Another elusive toy is a play set they made, uh, or they, well, I say they made, they had it, they had a sample made up for Toy Fair, uh, Cooter's Garage play set. Uh, it would have been nice to have a little bit of a Hazard County uh, town, which incidentally, I remember going to, yeah, when I was at Universal, when I went, when I was like 10, and we, it was obviously filmed on the Universal lot, and I remember going to it, thinking it was a real place, and coming home and telling all my mates, oh, I went to Hazard County, where the Dukes of Hazard live. I'm just thinking about that now. Yeah, I didn't realise it, it was a film set. <laughs> what an idiot. Now, in the early 80s, I was a sucker for these types of movies. Clash of the Titans, Krull... Voyages of Sinbad, I know it was slightly earlier, but yeah, all those kind of like mythical fantasy movies. 
and Clash of the Titans was an awesome, awesome movie. And Mattel brought out a line in 81. It was a really small line. You had Perseus, who's <laughs> the only one I've got. That's going to change. You had Calibus, you had Thallo, who was uh, Tim Pickett Smith, good old English actor. Uh, Sharon, which is the boatman. You had Pegasus, and then obviously this big Kraken, which goes for like $700 nowadays. It's uh, crazy. Um, I didn't realize this was Harry Hamlin. You know, I have to watch um, Housewives of Beverly Hills with my wife and I see this guy on it, it's Harry Hamlin. I'm like, why do I know him? Where, do, where have I seen him before? Just realized he's Perseus. So Perseus comes with his sword, a really nice detailed shield. And he's actually very realistic looking. He looks just like Harry. Um, I thought it was Mego at first, I'll be honest with you, when I started collecting, but I didn't realize it was Mattel, but I, yeah, they did a nice little line. Oh, his sword fell out. Anyway, but, you know, I really wish that this would be a bigger line. I want to see, you know, where's Boobo? Where's Boobo the owl? They could have done a little Boobo, but that's cool. And like Princess Andromeda, I want to say Andromeda, is that right? Anyway, the, the princess, I'd like to have seen her. And actually, there is some really sweet customs out there by a guy called Joshua Izzo, and you should definitely check them out. He's done a load of a load of extra figures. He's done Zeus. He's done Andro. Oh, he's Andromeda. He's done Andromeda. He's done Bubo. He's done play sets using the old Indiana Jones World of Souls. Uh, it's really, really smart. Really made me want to get into customizing and um, collecting this line a little bit more. So thank you, Joshua. You just made me spend a load more money on the rest of this line and then probably get into some customizing just like yours. Very inspirational. Okay, I know over the next sort of minute or two, I'm going to be embarrassed because, you know, I work for Hasbro. I've worked on Action Man for five years back in the day. I'm kind of, a, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but clearly not an expert because the story behind Hasbro and Palatoy and G.I. Joe and Action Man and Real American Hero and Action Force is super complicated and convoluted. In essence, Hasbro invented G.I. Joe back in the 60s and it very quickly went over to England, but we didn't know who, what a G.I. Joe was, um, so we called him Action Man. So those 12 inch figures were all that. And then when Real American Hero came out as three and three quarter inch in like 82, Palatoy wanted to do the same thing in, in England and Europe. So we renamed it Action Force and we used a lot of the figures that G.I. Joe were using and reintroduced them for European market international soldier blah 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 i had some of the action force but you'll notice here that none of these look like the gi joe figures these are all five point articulated flat plane rather than the o-ring with the metal pins i don't know why I, i'm going to assume the palatoy issued some of those i know they did so they issued snake eyes and and, Scar and scarlet things like that with the o-rings but they must have also produced their own figures because Hasbro Real American Hero wouldn't have produced them like this because they don't have O-rings and they don't have the metal pins. So I'm going to assume that Palatoy did a little bit of a mix and match, a, um, a buffet, a smorgasbord of figures. But anyway, I had a few of these and these were the three that really stuck in my memory. Um, like everybody, like you, I used to play in a bath with the, with the bubbles and I used to have you know, adventures underwater and this guy was wicked. He used to stand on my chest and dive into the bubbles and, and you know, help Luke on Dagobah probably. Um, don't know his name. <laughs> I don't know many of these names. I know this is Ground Assault. He had this really cool ladder in his backpack, which I thought was really neat, but he just looked really smart. And then Black Major, again, forgive me if I get the names wrong, but he was like clearly evil. He's got a skull and crossbones. So these are the three that I had from Palatoy's Action Force, which kind of really getting into some odds and sods at the moment. So Flash Gordon, now we all know how influenced George Lucas was with Flash Gordon, and um, these are from the animated TV series, but I used to watch the old Buster Crab black and whites, which I would say the designs are based loosely on. So I got these representing my love for the black and white Buster Crab, which I used to watch on a Saturday morning along with George Reeves Superman. I used to love, I used to have to think of the black and white old serials, I don't know why. Um, I just like, like Flash and Ming, they're just really cool. It reminds me of being six years old, uh, living in Eltham, down just out south, southeast London. And then Mork. I didn't know this existed until recently. I just love Mork and Mindy. I found him fascinating, John Williams. John Williams? Robin Williams. <laughs> Were they brothers? No. Uh, comes in his little egg. And again, just like a really spooky sculpt. Nanu, nanu. Mork calling Orson. Mork calling Orson. So those of you who are excited to learn about my Tron collection, I'm not gonna talk about it. You know why? Because I've already done a 20 minute Tall Toy Tales episode on this. And uh, I'll give you a quick run through now. So here it is. There you go. So I suggest you quickly zip over to my Tall Toy Tale channel and check it out if you wanna find out more about Tron.